Okay. Welcome to the Lift Heavy Run Long podcast. You can find us at www.liftheavyrunlong.com, on Twitter and Instagram, at Lift Run Long. Also, feel free to email me directly at the address wilson at liftheavyrunlong.com. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and please leave us a five-star review on iTunes. This is the LHRL podcast, episode number 58, with my lifelong friend, Will Moore. And I have sitting next to me to my right, my outrageously hot and unequivocally <laughs> intelligent wife, Dr. Amanda Kimsey Horrell. Hello, everybody. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Three weeks we've been away from podcasting. I know. I almost forgot what it was like to be in here. But we've been together on the beach throwing bocce ball and being good parents and Ooh. good sons and daughter-in-laws and hanging out with good friends. Yep. It could be a lot worse. It could. And across from me, I have the lovely and talented, <laughs> the Reverend Vaughn Rawls. Hello. I like being called lovely. <laughs> you are lovely. You're a lovely person. That's a good adjective to, to describe me, lovely. How was your break? G- good. Good. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been on the beach, but yeah, it was good. It, this <laughs> has been really hard on me. Has it? Three weeks has been really hard on me. But we got new energy here. We got Chris Perry on the camera, who we were going to have mic'd up. In the future, he's going to be mic'd up every episode, but it's new equipment. We're trying to do things a new way, and and I managed to foul it up. So I'm going to let that go, since I'm so good at just letting things go. (laughs) So good at just letting things roll off my my shoulder. We're going to practice that. He's going to invite you over, Chris, this week to dub in. Some voice work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go ahead and speak freely, and then you'll come over, and we'll do it on a mic later, and, and we'll get it all timed up. All right, before we get to our guest, I want to go through and, and read uh, some of the reviews that were writ- written. We had a couple of reviews. We had our first four-star review. <gasps> Whoa. What Aww. does that mean? It means they only gave us four stars out of five. Oh, man. But I, I think that that's... You know, did they that's just, part of the game. Did they just give you four stars? No, they had they had nice away. things to say. <laughs> okay, well no, there you had, go. He said, "Not too shabby, real and entertaining from real people, not elite sponsored athletes." To this, I can relate. I'll take that. That is a fantastic review. Yep. And that's like me. Like if I give somebody, I hate giving people five star reviews. Like I know that people ask for five star reviews. You know what I mean? But it's like. Is it really five stars? Like, <laughs> three and a, three and a, three and up is fine. That's great. Yeah, I yeah. take three and up all day long. Hell, the fact that we have people not throwing tomatoes at us <laughs> really says right. a lot. Well, that we have people take the time to to do it. Yeah. at all. Yeah, it's like I liked this show enough to go and as long as it wasn't Amanda <laughs> to, to go and <laughs> fill out the form and click the star at all. You know, and leave an honest review. I think okay. I should probably be asking for more of that. One but. day we're gonna get the one star review from the guy that's gonna be like, "I hate these people." <laughs> Did you hear what they said? They were talking about me. And that's my last podcast. That's when we shut it down. <laughs> Done. It will break my heart. It's a wrap. You want to hear our five star review? Yeah, we got a five. We got one of those. This is up from the our with the five. our friend Susan Stout. Oh, okay. oh, okay. She is a legit listener. Hey, she like listened from very beginning. Like, yeah. Every single time. Yep. Well, yeah. Well, when it was almost intolerable, <laughs> she hung in there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Five star reviews. I've been listening to podcasts for about 11 years, and this one is my new favorite. The reason is simple the co hosts are hilarious. The trio interact so well with each other as well as with their guests. They make you wish you were right there with them. As for the guests, I love that the hosts have conversations with regular people i.e. relatable individuals who have mostly all overcome obstacles to get where they are. Those are the types of people that inspire me most. One more review that was not on the, on iTunes, couldn't figure out how to get it on there, um, so he just sent me an email. I discovered you guys a few months ago and have listened to your archive of podcasts. What makes your team and the people you interview unique is that you are all ordinary people doing extraordinary things. You have a unique blend of personalities, which works quite well to help the listener understand your varying perspectives. And that's from our friend Tim Pierce. And I'd like to go on 
and tell you what he said about me. Please do. (laughs) Wilson, your story is uplifting to those who suffer in similar ways. Your openness and truthfulness makes it easy, I'm sure, for good people to come on the show and be open themselves. (laughs) That's very good. Dr. Horrell. Doctor. I would like to tell you what he said about you. Oh, he said oh, something no. about me? Yeah. Please tell me. We're not, we can't be going around the room. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to get to me. What if there is no you? <laughs> that, that's good. You're making quite the assumption. <laughs> there's a, well, there's, I, I, no, yeah, that, that's good. Thanks a lot, Pierce. <laughs> One of the best decisions you made was to add Dr. Amanda to the show. There are obvious reasons, because she's raging hot. He didn't say that. I did. (laughs) But I have a feeling she also does a lot to keep the team on task. There you go. I I would imagine he's referring to us together might have a tendency to go off in space. A lot of truth there. Of course, Vaughn helps to make the cast complete. (laughs) He has the ability to share his expertise without talking down to the listener or the guest, and his laid-back personality conveys the light side to almost any topic. Please keep up the great work. Tim Navarino, New York. Cool. New How York. Wow. Y'all have made my day. Yes. The reviews, the emails, man, kill it. I like that one. Kill it. I want to point out my aunt's painting, Laura Horrell. Chris, can you zoom in on that? Get us some <laughs> of that. We had uh, our daughter's uh, art was on the wall and the light was reflecting off of it. So I asked my aunt, who is an artist, an extremely humble artist, but extremely talented to give us a, a piece of work. And she came up with that ab- abstract and it is dynamite. Can we go somewhere and buy art? The title of it is Run Long. Cool. It's her, that's her vision. And there's a lot of thought and a lot of artsiness in there that I just don't have that part in my DNA. Can we plug her shop or website or something? She doesn't like have, she, she have won't one. even, she acts like that it's just something stupid that she does on the side. Don't she you, does, doesn't that bother you? Yes. <laughs> like, yes. My, one of my good friends is a comic book artist and he is phenomenal. Like, this guy can draw like nobody's business. And I'm like, why are you not on Reddit? Like, why are you not posting this stuff everywhere? You know, because people will buy, and he does sell stuff like on eBay or whatever. He, like, people will commission him to do comic stuff and he he does good that way but like why are you not why don't you have like a million followers on twitter <laughs> because this is amazing you know and he's oh, it's social it's difficult you know? yeah, it's it's I hard to so. throw yourself out there it's hard for me to refer to myself as a writer ever and yeah. for, if you look at that piece of art that is everything that you would find at a gallery sure you know anybody that would pay money oh, for yeah. art would right. pay money for that for sure and for her not to have a website for her not to have a shop is a travesty. I'm not even real sure what a travesty is, but <laughs> it's not spell, good. I spell travesty. <laughs> Do you know the definition of travesty? R A V E S T Y. I'm sure of that, but I don't know the definition. Something bad. And beside that yeah. is something else that's not bad, and that's Amanda's CrossFit L1 certificate. Oh, yep. Hey. Boom. How about that? We talked about that a couple of episodes ago when Wilson ruined your thunder. For <laughs> I it. sure did. Yep. And it seems like nobody's been able to get past it. <laughs> I think about it every day. <laughs> I'm really hoping she goes and she gets her L2, and I'll never say a word about it. <laughs> well, I get to try it out next week, so we'll see how that goes. All right. Well, I've got all kinds of stuff to talk about, but I want to go to, to our guest, um, Will Moore, because... I'm going to try to keep this to around an hour. If we keep it under six hours, I think that'll be good. That'll be a win. Uh, I've known Will since my very first day in fourth grade. That's right. And ever since that day, we've never had any. We, we've been we've been solid friends ever since then. For sure. And me and uh, you and Matt Pierce. Matt that's Pierce right. was the second person I think that yeah, I met. For, that's right. Trey Belcher was fast on the list. Uh, and boy, we thick as thieves. Still today. Still today. Man, it's really great to have you on here. Man, I am honored and uh, extremely glad to be here. This is really neat. I was surprised that you were so willing to come on here. You know, you're you're a highly successful guy, very professional, uh, and also extremely busy with everything that you have going on in your life with a, a wife and two young kids, uh, your business, 
coaching football, coaching young kids in football and all of your triathlons and uh, fitness endeavors? Well, um, I knew this was going to be a stretch for me to come on here because I've, this is for sure outside my comfort zone, you know, (laughs) uh, but I try to, or at least at least consider myself, put myself out there a little bit more, you know, and I know that if I do that, then likely positive things will come from that. And so this was for sure a stretch outside of my box. Um, and I'm happy to be here. This is exciting and I've watched it all, all the shows and it's an honor to be a guest on here. This is neat. Tell me a little bit about what you got going on in the fitness world. I know that you recently won your age group at the Memphis in May. That's right. Triathlon. That's right. Nice that's, a, that's a big deal. Well, it's uh, I've really enjoyed this season, you know, in my fitness life, I guess. You know, for a long time, you know, after college, I was doing weights and somewhat t- doing a little bit of CrossFit stuff on my own outside of a CrossFit box. But I was just getting banged up all the time. You know, it was just a knee, a back, you know, a neck, you know, kind of thing. And I just got to the point where I need to do something a little more uh, or less of an impact, you know, on my body. So I started swimming and I love that. And I picked up the bike and I love that. And so someone said, let's, let's do a triathlon. And so I started running a little bit and all of a sudden I was like, this is it. You know, I, this is really fun. And, uh, so I guess this is my third year of doing triathlons, and um, it's 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 a blast. It's hey, a blast. What's the longest one you've done? The, the longest one I've I've done is just the Olympic. You know what is that? It. And so that's a a one mile swim, um, a twenty or a forty k bike or twenty six mile bike I guess is what it is, and then a ten uh, k run. Okay. Okay. Wow, that's impressive. But you've always been after it. You're always, you've always been active. When we were in fifth grade, <laughs> football starts. I'm scared to death, but I'm a big, big kid. You know, I'm a big guy and I'm supposed to be, you know, tough. And I go out there to football practice and, and Will's team is practicing on the, on the other end of the field. And at the time you were tiny, you were small. And I thought at least I'm over here about to cry. At least Will's over there getting his tail beat. You know, at least he will be, I'll be able to go home with him and, and cry in our Cheerios. And I look over there and you're like killing it. The coaches are jumping around, you know, yeah, well, everybody's like loving you. <laughs> and I'm faking an injury over on the sidelines because I got my feelings hurt. You know, and it was always like that. You were always on top of the game, man. You you are the toughest guy pound for pound that I think I've ever met. Wow. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I <clears throat> uh, you know, I grew up on a street that was just chock full of boys and I was the youngest kid on the street. And so, you know, that was kind of before video games and things like that. And so I wanted to run with the big guys. And so I would do everything that they did. So it was, you know, race, racing bikes. It was skateboard, and banking ramps and jumping, see how high you could jump <laughs> and basketball, you know, in the driveway or football in the front yard or even in the street and I was going to prove to them that I could I could hang you know and so they just you know beat me up and I didn't cry about it I just you know had a good time and was one of the guys the guys in your neighborhood beat up a lot more than you there were some pretty rough fellas in your neighborhood it was it was a it was a rough and tumble bunch that was the Kirby conundrum there was sort of like was. Germantown and Kirby kind of mosh down in there and y'all didn't have street lights in your neighborhood I don't think so I used to I'm sure of it I used to, <laughs> I used to go over there to cause problems <laughs> So when I get to go to football and get to put a, you know, a helmet on and shoulder pads, I mean, this is cakewalk, you know, doesn't hurt near as bad as <laughs> laying on the sidewalk. <laughs> How tall are you? Now, 5'10 and change. How much do Hold you weigh? Hold on, change. 75, 175. Amanda doesn't believe I'm 6'5". <laughs> I, I keep, and let me tell y'all something. Will saw that picture on the wall of me in in high school (laughs) and he got so fired up that that goosebumps overtook him he had to take a moment to collect himself neither one of y'all have even noticed it (laughs) (laughs) that's the kind of friend that that will is there you go that's a good picture man you're the man will what we ought to do is just plug in the highlight film 
and spend the hour kind of going over that. You would need another SIM card, I think. Why don't y'all do that? You should have a bonus episode <laughs> after this where y'all just crank them out. Every, every wife of, of a high school football player would, is just throwing up. Oh, yeah. They're like, of, <laughs> and every high school football player is like, yeah, yes, I, yes. Love I love that stuff. <laughs> Some fun times, man. We had – it was a good time growing up. And, uh, you know, those guys that we grew up with, you know, still real tight today. Um, Wilson and I just had a, a friend of ours who's a year older than us just pass away. And uh, at his funeral, it was just a melting pot of people from all different ages. And just to see – you know, it was basically all the people that we grew up with, right? And just to see everybody congregate there, you know, to celebrate this, this man's life, it just says a lot about – the group of people we grew up with, you know, it was a, it was a fun time and uh, a good group of people. And yeah, I wouldn't trade anything for it. A lot of close relationships. And I, I think that we, we have that probably as good as anybody on, on the planet. I don't take that for granted how many people we, we had at our school and, and how good the relationship was with, you know, most people. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's impressive how many people you, you guys stay in touch with closely after high school, because I have, no friends that I still talk to from high school. I mean, we're Facebook friends and you like their stuff, but I've not spoken to anybody from high school since high school. And I think it's really cool that you have a, a close knit set of friends that you guys still run around and talk to each other and, and do things together ever so often. I think it's awesome. I do too. So tell me about you, you, you excel in high school and then you go off to play college football. Yep. Um, Wilson and I, we, you know, we play for, we had a really good team and uh, we get to the state championship game and we lose. It's a great game, hard fought game. We come out on the short end. We're sitting in the locker room after the game in, at Vanderbilt and our coach is just kind of giving us the after the game talk and how it's all going and we're all pretty much upset and everything's pretty quiet. And I'm in the process of taking my shoulder pads off. And he says right at that time, most of you guys this is the last time that you take your shoulder pads off. And he just caught me. And I was like, that's not me. That's not me. And because I just love this game and I was going to find some place to play. You know, it may not be Mississippi State or Tennessee, but I'm going to find a place to play. And luckily, I was able to get, you know, a scholarship to play at a small college and, uh, and had a great time, had a great experience, got to continue to keep playing the game that I love. And uh, still got great friends through the school there, and it was awesome. It was fun. When that was over and the coach said, this is the last time you're ever going to put on a, a football uniform, my first thought was, you're, you're thinking about finding a, a scholarship and a school to go play football. I'm thinking about finding somebody whose parents are out of town and going and getting drunk at their house because I can <laughs> finally go home after school. <laughs> I was so tired of it. Really? You know, you loved it. You loved practice. I prayed for rain every day. <laughs> it's just so much. Yeah, you know, you we, we had something to do every day after school from the time that we were – in seventh grade to the time that we were halfway through our senior year, there was a track practice, a wrestling practice, a, a something sure. after school that we had to be at. Yeah. I enjoyed that. You know, I enjoyed the busyness. You know, I enjoyed uh, the the physical fitness side of it. You know, I, I enjoyed the, the team aspect more than anything, probably. I remember you mentioned Trey Belcher just a moment ago. One time we were just sitting around, I remember, at his house, and we are just kind of reminiscing about what we're going to miss about – high school sports and he, he would say this that or the other and um what i came back with is i'm gonna miss the guys i'm gonna miss being a part of this i mean i'm miss being part of something that's bigger than me and i think that's what attracted me to team sports in general is being a part of something that's bigger than me and so i didn't want to get rid of that right after when i was 18 years old i wanted to keep trying to pursue that well, you obviously made the right decision as far as you could take my path of community or you could take your path of community. I think you found a better group to, to run around with and, uh, and some healthier hobbies. Yeah. Uh, but you get done with football at Lambeth, and then I'm sure that it would have been pretty easy to go to the couch from there for a little while. Did you just carry straight on through with with fitness and taking care of yourself? Yeah, you know, I um, lifting weights and staying in shape was is never a chore for me. You know, I always enjoy it. It's a, it's a, it's a fun hobby for me. You know, and it's, um, I enjoy the way 
uh, staying in shape makes me feel, you know, and, uh, and it's, and as I continued on through business, um, it became an outlet, a, a nice productive outlet for me. You know, I've chock full of stress and chock full of all the stuff that comes along with trying to build something and I needed a, an outlet and that could come in a negative way or a positive way. And I felt like this was the best way for me to <laughs> <laughs> channel that out. <laughs> I'm laughing because you're going to be going a direction. You know, you're going somewhere and whether that be a bad somewhere or a good so- somewhere, either one wouldn't make any difference. You're going somewhere. Yeah. And so I think it's really good that you've made the decisions that you've made in your life because you, you're a high energy if there ever was high, high you're going You're going all the way there. Yes, yes. that's right. And you did that with business. Yeah, so, um, you know, business is still growing and, uh, and I'm part of a good team now. So I still get that team environment that I was enjoying in sports. I've got it in business now. And, um, and what do you do? I'm in investment management. And so uh, we have our own company called uh, Atkins Capital Management. And um, you know, there's four, four guys that run in this. And we've got you know two really sweet ladies who also help run our practice. And a wonderful client base that we get a chance to interface with just great people who have been highly successful and that we just are trusted to help manage their money um and so that's been that's been fun to grow that and get to know bit people and that's where i met you that's right that was fun mm-hmm. and so you get to interact with a lot of people there you have a lot of responsibility there you have a, a family that you obviously get to interact with as much as you'd like and then on top of all that, you have a, a another group of kids that you interact with for what four months out of the year coaching football. Yeah, you know, so football. I guess that was my passion. You know, is love that game. I could do that forever. You know, I just everything about that game is. I just, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I love that game, and it, it, a lot of it was just it, it helped me become who I am today. And, um, and I was just lucky, you were lucky in the fact that we had really good coaches and men that helped us kind of bring us out, right? And so I got introduced to football in the fifth grade, and I had a great group of guys that helped me fall in love with this sport. And so when I got out of college, I said, I want to be one of those guys. I want to be a good coach at a, to a, a kid who's coming into this game at a young age and get him to love it as much as I did. And so that was my whole goal. And so ever since I graduated from college, I got an opportunity to coach in the, you know, these little fifth and sixth grade football teams, because that's typically when most kids start playing tackle football. And my whole goal is just to get these kids to love this game more at the end of the year than they did at the beginning. And if I do that, then I win. And you and I have some of the best conversations involving the lessons that you're trying to teach these kids as much as the lessons that these kids are teaching you. And it really helps me kind of spin things around and, and to where I can see what maybe my kids are taking from me or how to convey what I want to convey to my kids through the way that you, you treat your athletes. And it's just really, you take for granted that there's people that are willing to coach and, and do that. You know, you've tried to talk me into oh. going out there and coaching the line. <laughs> He'd be great. And there's he would just, be great. There's no way. You would be great. Wouldn't he be good? There's, there's, I'd probably so, but there's no way I could do something like that. No. It's just the patience. I don't know anything the, about football. Well, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. I'm not a student of the game. I went. I played center. I either stepped right or stepped left. <laughs> you know, so those are the two things I can teach you. Stay low, step right, step left if you – if you're getting beat, then fake an injury and get to the sideline <laughs> as soon as possible. If, I, if Al Wilson is in your grill, keep your mouth shut, call the huddle, <laughs> and pretend like he doesn't exist. <laughs> but, man, you just do a fantastic job with, with these guys. I've gone out and watched you play, and that stuff is, is heated business. You get, like, real fired up and yell at the uh, refs and get in fights with the other coaches and stuff? No, you know, I, I do get fired up, but not <laughs> – but uh, but not at the referees. You know, I always try to remember or be an example, you know, a better example uh, in front of these parents and in front of these kids, you know. But um, but I for sure get into it like it's an SEC game, you know what I mean? It's hey, a, youth sports is 
danger. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Serious parents stuff. Parents yeah. And that kind of thing. Yeah. No, I, I, and I, and I, and I know I, I can feel myself getting out there and I, you know, I'll comment to the parents in an email that, you know, <laughs> I know that I get too far into it, but again, it's just, you know, it's a, it's an emotional game. I think the way it's played, you have to play with some form of emotion. And so I don't know any other way, but to coach it emotionally too. So, um, that's just me coming out in that game. Well, you know, as long as you factor in class with emotion, I don't think that you can be too emotional. Yeah. You know, I, I, I love energy and I love high energy people. And I don't think that you should ever apologize for emotion, assuming that there's some class in there with it. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, I, I agree. And so we, we keep it clean. You know, we know. <laughs> yeah, if you're like out there screaming <laughs> yeah. and cussing at a fifth grade. Yeah, that's, like that's something's wrong. Yeah, you. that's right. Like, but there, there are people like that. There you know? is. <laughs> you're not one of them, but I guarantee you that there's a coach coaching a peewee football team somewhere. It's like, you little mother. <laughs> get off your. Stop being a, you know, like there are people like that. Like, yes. I don't know. <laughs> yes, yeah. and I'm I'm pretty sure I would be one of those people <laughs> like that after a few days of volunteering with Will. So I'm gonna stay away from that. <laughs> Will would have to fire you. Yeah, <laughs> well, I can't believe you said that. Wouldn't that be awkward? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're my friend, but you can't cuss at the That's children. Right. <laughs> Who do you think you are? <laughs> I got stories on you. I'm gonna take you down. <laughs> you fire I'm me. Start, I'm gonna start my own team. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you get done with uh, you, you get done with college. You start coaching football. You got all this stuff going on, and, and you're just kind of a, a a gym rat at this point, I guess. You're you know an hour a day lifting weights, and and when did the com- competitive stuff kick in? With the with the triathlon, triathlon. stuff. Uh, well, so someone had mentioned to me um, during this. I'll never forget. It was uh, the Titans, Rams. Super Bowl. Do y'all remember that? No. What? <laughs> what? I remember that. No. Yeah. I was that was the greatest <laughs> Super Bowl of all time. I probably went to the Super Bowl party, but <sighs> it came down the last second, last second, and the and the Titans got yeah, tackled on the goal line. Oh man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember. You don't remember that? No. Oh gosh. I great. really want to tell you I do, but I'm afraid that you're gonna <laughs> call me out and then it's gonna get awkward. <laughs> <laughs> that says something about all of us. It's like we could have just been. Oh my god, that was great! Yeah, yeah. and then you're like, Err. that's good. That's what Chris is doing back there behind yeah, the camera. Yeah, Chris, Chris is like, I can't believe yeah. y'all don't know that. <laughs> so uh, this guy said, "Hey, we should do a triathlon." I'm like, "All right." And so we, you know, started training. This is uh, oh one, I guess it was, and uh, and and we trained up. That was that was said as the as the ball is getting pretty to much the- like. We're gonna win. Let's do a trap line. Oh, 2001. <laughs> <laughs> 2001. I probably didn't even watch the Super Bowl. Yeah. 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 I don't know what I was doing <laughs> yeah. in 2001. Who was the halftime performer? Oh yeah, <laughs> Aerosmith. <laughs> did you just make that up? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so we did. I did Memphis in May. I did Memphis in May that year, and um, and it was great. I was like, this is it. I'm going to start doing this. I can, I'm going to compete in this. And then like the next month I met Katrina. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that, that'll, that'll curb some training. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is a lot more fun hanging out with her <laughs> than swimming and running. And you will find nobody on the planet to argue. with you there. <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to hang out with her. So then you were full time training to try to get Katrina yeah, to I was stick like, around. How can I get her to marry me? Uh huh. And she <laughs> felt sorry for me and married me. <laughs> that that was an, an investment well played and, and well paid off. It worked <laughs> out. And so then uh, then it just was but she uh, she obviously takes care of herself. She does her own fitness pretty hardcore, doesn't she? Yeah, you know, she is in, um, and she's gone through some different seasons of, too, um, as far as what she's enjoyed um, being involved in. She still enjoys the the aerobic type step class stuff, you know. Um, she did some CrossFit and enjoyed that a little bit, too, and she's now kind of shifted towards playing tennis. I love tennis. Oh. I don't ever play it, but I, I love it. Well, she, it is, um, it's been fun 
watching her grow through that sport. Um, she grew up cheering and dancing and just kind of, you know, working really hard in that type of an arena and never really played any type of real competitive sports and much less anything with a racket. And so she picks up this game, this racket, something that's all brand new, understanding, you know, just strategy in itself and all different kinds of things. And just to watch her go from, you know, zero to where she is today, it's been awesome. Well, it's always cool to have something like that, you know, like that you can grow and compete at because you're like, oh, look, I, I accomplished this thing. Yeah. You know, I, I won this tournament or I beat that chick that I've been watching for or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you can go to the, the step classes and all that stuff all day long and, and that's cool and and good, but there's no real like, oh, I stepped faster than <laughs> yeah. no, I'm Amanda with you. today. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but, but if we start playing a sport, it's like, yeah, I... Forty love. Did you see that bitch? <laughs> yeah, you know, like. <laughs> so it's you know that I, I like that. You know, I like having stuff like that. I do too. And uh, so for a long time, she didn't want me watching her. You know, to play. And then uh, her team made it through the city, through the state, into regionals. Wow. And yeah, I didn't realize that. And she, uh, we just wrapped up this past weekend in Mobile. They won. They won the regionals. Oh, so they're going to Katrina? nationals. Yeah. Nice job. And so Good I got to job, watch her. Katrina. Yeah, I got to watch her. And uh, I was shocked on how nervous I was for her. You know, like, yeah. you know, I'd, like I'll, I had the nervous belly and oh, all that yeah. stuff. And I was, had to play it cool because I didn't want her to see me all worked up. <laughs> But it was, it was, it was great. It was just something that I got to appreciate more about her, you know, and watching her dig through, you know, the ups and downs of playing a game and uh, and root for her and see her obviously succeed. It was, it was fun. It was a, a, a great moment. It was a great weekend. That is awesome. Congratulations to her. When is that? Uh, well, that that tournament was this past weekend, and then uh, her nationals is the end of October. Okay. Keep me posted on that. I will. I can't remember where I was with the with the triathlon. Oh, part. so you, oh, I yeah, think yeah, you yeah. asked me so, about. So yeah. you were on the on the triathlon track, and then you met the hottie, and you kind of <laughs> took a took a side road. Yeah. And then what happened? Oh well, so yeah, we so we met the hottie, and we you know <laughs> we started having family and, and kids, and so any type of training or anything like that is is out the window because we're chasing kids and working hard and. That's all gone. So now kids, uh, my daughter's 14 and my son is 12. They, you know, we're not changing diapers anymore. (laughs) And so they're a lot more independent and that frees up some more time for us to do kind of what we we can do, you know, during a, if I want to go for a jog or a run, I don't have to worry about a babysitter. You know, they can take care of themselves. So this triathlon stuff picked back up and, um, and it's just been, you know, picked back up into more of that competitive groove that's, I was kind of searching for and. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. How much time do you spend on your bike? A week? Yeah. Uh, probably eight hours, I bet. So you ride an hour a day? Mm, well, I'm, or, I'm probably, uh, yeah, like hour and a half, two hours uh, when I'm biking. So I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that Tuesday, Thursday, and some Saturday, Sundays type stuff. The reason I ask is because you and I are signed up for a triathlon. Right. Shelton Bub's <laughs> doing it. Michael Shelton is supposed to be doing it. Kinda, supposed to be kinda doing kinda it. Supposed to be doing it. Matt Pierce is is supposedly in. Supposedly <laughs> signed up. Trey Belcher's doing it. In. And Greg Bernstein in. Greg Bernstein's in. I'm going down there with some pretty tough customers. The triathlon world is a is a great melting pot of people. Yeah, it sure is. And and everybody is encouraging everybody. Uh, no matter what fitness level, everybody's there to ac- trying to accomplish a personal goal. And uh, so some, sometimes it's their very first one and they're coming in towards the back and they're struggling. And to see the cheers of, of those folks finish is great. And to see their the appreciation on the finisher's face, you know, is great too. And so it's a very fun environment, a very fun community to be a part of. And um, so that said, you're going to find a spot in there and have a good time. You know how many hours I put on my bike? I, I have the I still have the the tags from Mighty Might two years ago. <laughs> my number like wrapped around the, the handlebars. Got to take that one off. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So we'll see how that goes. I, yeah. I guess uh, the tires, are they going to dry rot? You think they'll be all right? I'd get them checked out if it's been a couple of years. Okay. Aren't you supposed to service those things? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're supposed to ride those things yeah. too, That's but right. I haven't been doing that. But even if you've been riding it, you still need to take it to the whoever <laughs> That's it is. That's a that hassle. <laughs> Especially since full motion clothes. Yeah. That was it would spot. be one thing if I could go up there and just shoot the breeze with Matt and, yeah. you know, just bill me for whatever. And But I don't have that anymore. So I, I won't take the bike to get it serviced. So I'll over, just keep my fingers crossed. Go ahead. So overall in training, besides the bike, swimming and running, how much time do you put into that weekly? Yep. Um, all my workouts, for the most part, are in the morning. It's all, That's the best time that I have, you know, between everything else to get it done. Mm -hmm. And so I'm swimming two days a week on Mondays and, and, uh, and Wednesdays. And then I'll bike Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and then, uh, and run also on Monday, Wednesdays when I'm swimming and Fridays. Okay. What time is morning? 430. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What time is your morning? Uh, it's uh, everything is is changed now. Like I'm I'm coming into your world. <laughs> like uh, um, I've been getting up at seven. Yeah, because I was telling Chris earlier, I I don't get home until six, six or maybe a little later. <clears throat> and I want to stay up. I, I used to go to bed like at eight thirty nine o'clock, no problem. Now I don't want to I don't want to go to bed at that time. You know, like everybody. My, it's summertime. They're all up to eleven o'clock. Yeah, you know, and I can totally do that if I if I don't get up till right. seven. Seven. You know, Chris fun. is behind the camera shaking his head with his five kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But he, you know, he goes and works out at six a.m., which is what I try to do. You know, that's that's my goal. But the last couple of weeks, I just I'm just kind of been like, eh. morning starts at six a.m., not a second before. Yeah. And it doesn't start with a workout. But you were doing workouts in the morning for a while, weren't you? When I found Amanda long enough to reel her in. Yeah. Yep. Let me tell you another, another, another little <laughs> aside story. My son's 11 and every, or 10. He's about to be 11. And every once in a while, he gets scared and wants me to go upstairs and say, will you come upstairs and sleep with me? I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to. I don't want to because he has this bed that's like these... Have you seen these beds that you order and they come in a box and they're like foam and you, you pull it out of the box and cut it open and you just lay it in the floor and overnight it expands into this, Ghost well, I don't know what it's called, but it, it, it comes very, it's like super compressed. You cut it open, it's like, and then overnight you just leave it and it blows up into a bed. Well, we got him a queen size one for his room. Because they're dirt cheap. It's like 150 bucks for a queen mattress. You don't, when you get in that thing, you don't want to get out of it. <laughs> like, I, and I, that's why I tell them, I don't want to go up there and sleep with you because I'm not going to get up in the morning. Because when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to be sunk down into this thing. And I'm like, and my watch is going to go off. And I'm like, oh. <sighs> Uh, and then you're so sunk down in it, I'm like trying to sit up and get out of the bed, and he's laying over there snoring, and I'm like, uh, uh, and I gotta get like three or four rocks, and I finally can pop up out of the bed. But I'm, tell, I'm telling you, man, it's like the most comfortable thing I've ever slept in in my life. Really, hundred fifty dollar bed? Yeah, I, hmm. I, I'll have to find a link or something. But anyway, you made me think of that when we were talking about kids. <laughs> 6 a.m. my day doesn't start with exercise either, unless there's nothing else going on in the day. I'd love to get up and run. I like to wake up early in the morning and go do like a long run. I like to wake up on a weekend early, go do something to totally destroy myself, Yeah, assuming I can come home and do nothing. Sure. I really like that. I like that too. But you know what's even – what I've really noticed about that is when you when – I, when I have a schedule, you really – like. There is something to like laying your shorts, your socks, your shoes, everything out the night before. I, I used to do this, when, you know, before I we opened the gym, and I could just it didn't matter if I what I wore or I could just work out at twelve or nine or seven or whatever. Mm -hmm. But now, it, 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 if I wake up and I walk in there into the bathroom at five o'clock in the morning, and there's no 
I got to like go, okay, now I got to go find socks. I got to go find shoes. I got to go find, what, what, what am I going to wear a hat? What do I need a water bottle? If I don't do that the night before, it's not happening. Like, that's that's, uh, me that's too. a must. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Amanda gave me the suggestion of sleeping in your workout clothes. I could, yeah, I could totally see that. I read an article, a running article. Where you just sleep in your. Yeah, if you're an early, outfit, early yeah. person, if, if it takes sleeping in your stuff to get up and just put your shoes on. Yep. Go ahead and anti chafe up. Put the, <laughs> I don't put know about the, that. Put the nipp- nippets on and <laughs> be ready to go. Because I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not sweating without my nipple covers on. <laughs> and I'm not running without, without anti chafe. Hmm. Bear, bear butter. <laughs> you need to get a hold of some bear bear butter. I thought you were a body glad guy. Not anymore. Bear and bear bear butter. My buddy Ed Thomas, who is on the podcast, that's what he sells. It's like body glad natural hmm. nature. Do we have a coupon body code? Glide. <laughs> I'm sure I could get one. I got four things of it in there. That was a damn fine commercial right there. <laughs> right. So Will calls me one day and he says, "Man." I, my feet are killing me or my knees are killing me from running. He said, what do you do to make your knees not hurt? I said, man, I'm not going to have any answers that you don't have. You know, I've been (laughs) doing this for a year and you've been doing this forever. And later on in the conversation, I said, what kind of miles are you running? Like, what's your pace? And he's like, I don't know, like, 650. I was like, yeah, that's why you're perfect. <laughs> you're trying too hard. Really. <laughs> Slow that roll down to about 12 minute mile and you'll feel different. <laughs> 10 minute mile, you're going to feel fan. <laughs> the podium may get a little bit further away, <laughs> but you'll feel a lot better. Yeah, no, I still struggle with that run. I do, uh, it, it, it really beats me up. You know, I used to have you know, thoughts about maybe wanting to do an Ironman or a half Ironman. But I think I've pretty much put those to bed. I don't know that that is going to happen. You know, Do you think that that has as much to do with just your personality and your intensity as it does anything else? With, with wait a minute. Meaning you, that you're, you're running a 650 mile, like – you're not going to go do an, a marathon at a 650 mile, right. so you may as well be like, oh, screw it. I'm not going to worry about oh, doing yeah. that. No, you know I, what I mean? Yeah, or, no, I'm with you on that. I think if I were to attempt to do um, a half Ironman or an Ironman, it would be more for the completion would be the goal. It would be a win, you know? So I could be fine on uh, just having that as the goal, but – the training and the time that it would go, at least for the run, for me, I don't think I am personally at this age, 40, durable enough to last. I yeah. think I think I would get banged up. It's hard. Yeah. And I, I, I got a friend of mine. Go ahead. You're, you're saying that you're not durable enough to last at the intensity that <laughs> you would like to train. <laughs> the question as to whether you can finish a half Ironman – there's no debate about that. Now, whether you care anything about finishing a, a half Ironman at the pace that you may have to finish it, yeah. that's what you don't want to do. And here's a good example, a very good example for me. Like, it'd be cool to go run Boston Marathon, but I got to run a 315 marathon. Yeah. And that ain't happening. Like, it's just not. Like, I don't care to make that happen because of what I have to do, like what you're saying. Yeah. The things I'm going to have to do to go run a 315 marathon is just, I have no desire to do that. Like, you know, I, I, I just want to keep picking up heavy weights and I'll, I'll, I'll accept my 340 marathon time and that's cool with me. That's good. You know? Time. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I, I you. totally get what you're saying. And that's a curse of success. I mean, I think that that has to do with, you know, you have benchmarks. You have, you you know what kind of shape you've been in and you know what to expect out of yourself. Somebody like me who just kind of walked into fitness, you know, so far out of right field and in such bad shape, everything's a victory for me. You know, everything that I finish, regardless of time, is an accomplishment and and a victory. I think I would feel a lot differently if at one point in time I was running, you know, seven and eight minute miles and and finishing four hour marathons. And then all of a sudden I went back to six hour marathons. You know, that's a really good point. Like, I guess, I guess we, we, you and I, we don't really know any different. 
Right. There, there's no I, there's no I real regression what, yeah, for me. You know, I don't know what it's like to run a five minute mile. So okay. Yeah. So I have, I'm not sad when I don't. <laughs> right. Right. Well, there's, there's no like, man. I used to be able to run a four thirty. Now I'm at eight. Yeah. Like, man, this sucks. I'm always thinking like, man, I used to be drinking vodka right now. Like, you know, I used to be. I should be at a gas station sucking down pizza and right. and slushies. <laughs> so. Well, I, I do think, uh, I, I, and you and I have had similar conversations about this before, and I think that for me, I do have to um, know when to pull back, you know, because I kind of, I, I guess just the way I'm wired is, is just to go hard all the time. Uh, Katrina and I were, were married 15 years this past May. And we went to stay at this little lake house in Hardy, Arkansas, on Lake Thunderbird. If you're not familiar with Lake Thunderbird, it's kind of it's a small man-made lake that's about the size of Horseshoe Lake in Arkansas. All right. So relatively small deal, right? They have kayaks there. And she says, let's go kayak. Great. And we're going to start kayaking. And I'm doing it. And I'm kind of pulling out in front of her, you know, and just kind of going. And we make our way around one side. And she's like, where are you going? And I'm like, I'm going to go around the lake. And she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so how am I doing that? I was like, well, I had a rope. And I said, well, just hold on to this rope and we'll just go. I'll just pull you. Yeah. And I was being, I thought I was being nice. And she got really mad. <laughs> I don't need you to pull me. That's around. what it's just like. It's Keep odd. your stupid rope. Yeah, and I but I wasn't trying to compete or I wasn't try. I just was just gonna go and do. And uh, so I I felt real bad about that. But uh, <laughs> I do sometimes struggle with kind of just hanging in there and and for the sake of it, as opposed to going all out on something. Um, it's just, I don't know, just my the way I'm wired, I guess. I don't know. Recently, you were doing the, I don't know if it was the, the trail race series or something, and and you and Trace McIntyre, we graduated with Trace McIntyre, and he's another lifelong yeah, friend of ours. Him. Yeah. And so him and Will were going to be at the same location running a, what, two-mile race or three-mile? It was a really short race that y'all were doing over at Stanky Creek, I think. Yeah, that's right. And I told Amanda. Was it like a blue loop? I don't remember. It was which just one. a five k. It was a four k. Yeah, or something. it was. It, it, yeah, we did two out there. We did two out there. We did. Yeah, probably just like a blue loop or something. Yeah, I told Amanda. I said one of them is going to die. <laughs> Between the two of them, they're going to go so hard against <laughs> each other, like they used to do. And they're both going to win the race. Twenty five <laughs> years ago, one of them is going to die, and the other one will win. <laughs> but I mean, I. I just thought that's going to be so ugly. And with me going to the triathlon with you and Trey Belcher and Greg Bernstein, somebody will probably die there. Well, <laughs> it won't be me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be spirited. That's for sure. It'll be spirited. That was a fun time. I've never done that uh, trail series before. And, uh, and again, all, you know, I know CrossFit has got this too. And um, the, com but just like, again, the community, in these different environments is what makes these races, oh, yeah. you know, I know the community, you will know, talk a lot about that and CrossFit and that's part of the attraction is, is that community. And it's really cool. What athlete or athletics brings that community, no matter if it's tennis with, you know, with Katrina or triathlons with me or running or whatever it is, it's fun to be a part of something like that. Are you generally training with someone? Yes, I am. Uh, and it's, couple of reasons why but the main reason for me is just flat out accountability you know if if i'm gonna tell you that i'll meet you there in the morning i'm gonna be there yeah i'm not gonna flake yeah. out yeah but if you tell me that you're gonna be out you're gonna go on vacation and we normally do this on thursday mornings i'm probably gonna sleep in what about racquetball? Are you still playing racquetball? I don't. I don't. Uh, that you was, remember taking me out there about 270 pounds? I do. And slamming me, run, dragging me all over that court. That was, racquetball is fun. I always wanted to play that. They had it in, in college and pharmacy school, and I'd go watch them play, but I never never jumped in there and tried it. You'd be really it. good at it. Yeah. That's a fun game, too. It looks fun. That's a fun game, too. And, and I enjoyed that as well. It just got, again, kind of like the weights. It kind of was beating me up more than I was enjoying it. You know, it's just, 
you're cutting hard and stopping and starting and shoulders and I just I I, I guess I getting old man <laughs> yeah. yeah that's about the only way to put that you you were looking for a, a workaround that's there. right like, it, uh, yeah. that just, that's just what's no two happening. ways about it <laughs> i played racquetball with my neighbor for a while and it was a lot of fun but then he like went and ran off with the other neighbor lady <laughs> oh <laughs> had to leave so. oh. that was that was the end of my racquetball and Vaughn was just standing outside the glass. With my racket. Like, like, racket. Man. <laughs> this racket and balls like, uh, what's going on with the neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> Something that we talked about after you won the your age group in the Memphis and May triathlon, after you went into this long I, I called you and I said, Man, I, I cannot believe you won your age group at the Memphis and May Marathon. That's incredible. Holy mackerel, congratulations. You're like, well, I didn't really win it. I was like, what do you mean you didn't really win it? He's like, well, you know, they really the the first place and second place. The guy place. in the first place won the whole race, so and, you got to yeah. move up yes, to right. first place. And That's bullshit. I know how it works. <laughs> I understand. You won your age group. That's how that works. You won your age. That's that's yeah. what I said. Congratulations on winning. Your, well, you know, it's oh, like man. there's there's a lot of people in my age group, and so they were all taken out by, <laughs> you know, so it really made it easy. And I'm like, just stop. <laughs> Congratulations. So you win your age group at the Memphis and May Marathon, and we're talking about how that felt and what went into that. And something interesting that you pointed out was, we were discussing our age group and how intense, how competitive people are at 35 to 40 or 38 to 42 or whatever that is. And, and you, you had an interesting viewpoint on that. Well, you talking about the CrossFit point, man? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the, uh, this is just a theory. Um, and I don't know that, you know, for whatever it's worth, but the, at this moment, I don't know if it's always like this. Cause again, I've been doing this probably three years but the most competitive class that they're typically winning these events is the 35 to 45 year old kind of group right in there. That's the fastest guys. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's not a whole lot of young twenties now. Yeah. I mean, well, it was the same way when we were 35 to 39, like <clears throat> that age group. Or, well, I think it was that a, it was group is we shifting were, up. And, that's exactly and what's happening. Y'all yeah, are. We, I've always been in. Or I'm, we. I guess, yeah, y'all are always in a very we've competitive always group. Been in a seriously yeah. competitive age group. Okay. Like, I don't know why that is. Well, but let six him. years ago, like it was the same way. Well, you would think that. I would think that the young twenties, the mid twenties, should be coming in there and wearing us out. But what I'm thinking is some of these triathlon events. If you look back three, four years ago, there may have been 200, 250 people at these events. Now they're about 100, 125. So where's this, where's half of them gone? And I think a, a CrossFit is chipping away at some you of that. You think so? Hmm. Well, because if, if I'm a young 20, uh, oh, mid-20. Oh, you're talking about the younger kids are going and doing, yeah, they would normally not running as much. Yeah, they would, they would yeah, normally find like they're, this. They're finding their crack somewhere else. They yeah, can right, go yeah, do yeah. CrossFit and, yeah. and get their rocks off doing that instead yeah. of triathlon. Or hot yoga or pure bar or orange theory or whatever, well, whatever I'm just the saying, other thing is. If I want to compete. Right, where can I go so if, you work, work, yeah, if I, I want to go you. compete? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, I can compete in triathlons or I can compete in CrossFit because I have CrossFit games now, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't have to learn how to swim to do that. Well, I can that's just, not necessarily true anymore. Oh, I guess that is true. I guess that is starting to put in there. So maybe the hurdle's a little lower. No, but I get, I totally, said, yeah. I totally get what you're or saying. Or Spartan yeah. runs and yeah, things Spartans, like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All those kinds of competitive. Barbarian yeah. challenge. Just yeah. a lot of yeah. competitive Tough fitness. Tough mutters. She just finished a barbarian challenge. Cool. I got another one coming up. Well, it's not Barbarian. It's a different one. I don't even know the name so of it. It's got like a obstacles, of course, yeah. and stuff like that. That's she fun. doesn't ever know any of this stuff until she's know. like Amanda just 100 says, miles hey, into the road trip. She's like, sign up for this. Okay. And I sign up. This is some kind of obstacle course. It's a cool name. It is. Barbarian. Yeah. Do you get like a Viking hat with it? I no, think that's the appeal no. of it. You know, like, I want to be a Spartan runner. I want to I want to be the, what was the first one? The first... Uh, Tough guy. No, no, the uh, tough guy. <laughs> you got the horn. Yeah, it was. The, it, it was a Viking kind of a it deal. Was, what's it called? Tough it's guy. A, it's a tough guy. <laughs> you need guy? to watch Whatever. the documentary "Rise of the Sufferfests." Okay. Rise of the Sufferfests, and it talks about where it started. The tough guy. The tough guy. 
Yep. And it's really interesting. And the guy that started tough guy is a nut, <laughs> an absolute nut. And he didn't, he missed out on all of the money that came with these obstacle races. Oh, wow. Uh, totally missed it. Hmm. But it's a good, it's a good documentary. And it talks about, you know, why, what these weekend warriors are getting out of it. You know, what people, you know, get out of putting themselves through these challenges and the guy that started the Spartan races, right? He's an absolute animal. Oh yeah, dude, he is Joe like Decina, I think it's whoa. Like, I mean, I don't know how much time I want to spend with him on a social level, but <laughs> he is—he's tough. Woo. Yeah. None of that stuff's for me. <laughs> You've done a Spartan race, right? I've done a couple tough mutters. Okay. But I don't—I don't like all that getting up and down. <laughs> these these hips just don't. You know, Vaughn was talking about rocking out of Jackson's bed. Yeah. I do that at every chair I get out of. <laughs> you know, it's inertia. I got to get some momentum. Man. Well, you know we got that Tough Mudder in this, this fall. Yeah, I know. Did you sign up? Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, I don't want to do that alone. I do everything you tell me to do. Okay. And I'll do anything with you that you tell me to do. So I'll sign up. I'll probably win it. <laughs> I'll get in shape. I'll start tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I've been starting tomorrow for... <laughs> going on 40 well, years do like i do just start your own little division where i'm the, <laughs> I'm the heaviest <laughs> tough mutter runner in the world <laughs> for the <laughs> for the 225 bearded guys make with bad hips sort of, and up you know yeah. what's crazy is i heard on the way to work today a a subway commercial this is the first day of like starting over the first day of your life like they made Made that sandwich <laughs> sound like this was the first day of the rest of your of life. the rest of your life. Jared. That was it. I was like, "Holy cow, that's a very strong commercial for a sandwich." It's the first day of Jarrett's life waking up doing the same thing over and over again. He's not doing so well. <laughs> He's in prison. Probably. <laughs> he wish he could yes. start his first day over again. <laughs> but it was it was I don't know that commercial was, I was like whoa it's, a, it's all for a sandwich. It's <laughs> for a sandwich. I'll take a twelve inch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I tell this story all the time. You were talking about the 35, 30, the, the, the 35, yeah. 39 year olds being right. so intense. We did this 5K, and there was all everybody in the 35 to 39 year old was all rock stars. You know, this was Vaughn and Greg Perry, all the people in, in, in this community, and I know most of them, and they're all 35 to 39. So it's like any chance of doing anything, you know, even like, even like winning the, the, the age group when you're the only person competing in your age group, which I'm all about. And I'm all about not mentioning that there wasn't anybody else in the, in the age group. Like, I have no problem with that at all. But I can't even do that because there's always going to be somebody that's, you know, one of these guys is awesome. So we do this, this small 5K. And everybody takes off, and there's this mass of 35 to 39-year-old, like a big old amoeba, just <laughs> taking off. And I can just barely keep them in my sight during the first quarter mile. They're already, like, leaving. <laughs> and all of a sudden, they go, bloop. We turned the wrong way. No. I yeah. mean, it was like, per if you said, Wilson, who do you want removed from this competition? <laughs> this was like a mass Nancy Kerrigan, Tanya Harding deal. Like, <laughs> whose legs do you want broken right now? I would have been like, him, 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 him. They all went right. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what guys, happened was, hey guys, oh. so, <laughs> yeah. some little 5K that was going on at the same time as this 15K race that we were running had put cones on our route. The leader of the race was like one of these guys from a foreign country yeah. that you're never going to keep up with this guy. But he was gone. He saw the cones, got confused, made a right. Right? And then the couple other people between our group and him followed him. This is one of my fr one of my good friends course that made this route. Like I've ran this route over and over, I know, and he did not tell me it was going to change. I was like, "Why did they? Turn? Why did he turn?" But then everybody else in my group starts turning, and I'm like, "Maybe he changed the course and just didn't tell me about it." I guess I'll just go with these guys. So we just turn right off. He's trying to detract from my from my success. And then Wilson, <laughs> did you get first in your age group on that? 
I don't know, but I know that I beat Vaughn and Greg Perry and, <laughs> and those guys. I know, I remember. <laughs> you were psyched, I yeah. know. Yeah. Obviously, I remember, too. It's been like two years ago, and I still talk about it <laughs> weekly. It was longer than two years ago, man. That was a while back now. It's probably about three years ago. Yeah, at least. At least. I didn't mean to steal your thunder on that last story. It's all right. I'm sure I got my medal somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's still framed hanging over the bed. It needs to be over there by that by that picture. Should we yeah. talk about that picture some more? <laughs> well, that's a good looking picture. Uh, Six five two seventy, all American. All, all Metro. American. All American. He even pulled his shirt up to show his abs. <laughs> yeah. I kept it up. That baby was cut off. Hemmed. Hemmed up. That thing was hemmed high. Whoever hemmed that hemmed it like really <laughs> did high. good. Yeah, but it looked good. I was, did I was good. big and sloppy, man. Oh, I yeah. loved it. Liked it. Yeah. Tight. All, all, all conference has gone to all state. <laughs> five eleven and three quarters has gone to six five. For sure. I was printed as as six one in the in the in the program. Yeah, I was printed six one my sophomore year, and then I moved. I shrunk. Shrunk. <laughs> Got back down to to six feet. Coach Nedlin was all about letting some people. Pad up some stats yep. in, in that area. Yep, yep. Well, my uh, I was, so I was pretty small, you know, and we got to get our letter jackets uh, as sophomores, and I was like, you know, I'm going to grow another six, eight inches for sure, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just 16 years old. So my letter jacket today is massive. I mean, it is like down <laughs> here, past my finger. One. Yeah. I never wore it. It was just huge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, not good. All right. I have on here something that we always want to talk about, which is bliss. We talk about mm. bliss as being, what would you do if time and money were not a issue? Oh. All the time, all the money in the world, what would you wake up at 4.30 and begin mm-hmm. doing? Mm. I don't know. Will uh, Moore is always prepared, and I, he wanted some structure to this thing, <laughs> and I told him that I just couldn't couldn't provide that. So asking him a question off the cuff like that is probably going to give him an anxiety attack. No, 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 because I, I think when we talk, I think about bliss. I don't think about uh, – I don't know if I think about me in that. I think when I, when I think about what makes me happy, what gives me the most joy is seeing that in other people. Like I think about my kids, you know, I see them experiencing a success and that I could do that every day. I could see my daughter smile because of something that she did. And I could do that every day. I could see my wife battle like she did this past weekend and come out as a win in her tennis match. I could do that every day, you know? Um, So I get my joy out of other people. I think, I don't know that I get my joy in something that, I'm doing so much, you know, I, I, I get more of a positive vibe that way. You win of all the answers that we've gotten. That, that's a, that's <laughs> yeah, a pretty that's, damn good answer. You nailed that one. Yeah. yeah. That, that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. Cause I, you know, I think that for me, my, my interests have hop, scopped and skipped around. You know, I, there was a season that I, I liked football. You know, there was a season that I liked lifting weights there's a season i like racquetball there's a season now that i like triathlons but there's gonna be a season down the road that i'm gonna want to do something else and so i hadn't found or know or in that thing that gives me you know i like asking that question i like to hear people's responses to that question partially because i'm i'm curious if people know how close they are to living their bliss now Mm. You know, and I think that my asking that question helps me to realize how much bliss that I have in my life. I mean, I, I pretty much, I pretty much do everything. This this lift heavy run long. This podcast, the the blog, the you know spending time with Amanda, the CrossFit, the events, the the Gardner Shadow. You know, everything that I that I do is about as close to living a a perfectly blissful life as I think that one can can expect that's awesome and i think from there but i think that with that comes a lot of work and a lot of consciousness and realizing all the time that that's what you have yeah you know because anybody could take if there's anybody that can take it an outstanding situation and and turn it into just complete crap that's that's me (laughs) uh so 
you know, I, I think that I have to be really conscious of, of how much I, I have going on in my life. That's, that's really good. And, and block out the, the things that could be better or that should be different or that if I would have done this, this would be the way it would be. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that that's the case for a lot of people. I think a lot of people are doing a lot better than they, they believe, believe themselves to be. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Well, I'm proud of you, man. That That is, that's awesome. I'm real happy with where I am today. You know, I, I people ask questions like a, a question, like the most blissful moment, or, you know, if you were to think about that, one question would be, you know, if you could go back in life and change one thing, what would you change? You know, what would you do differently? And, uh, I don't know. I have an answer for that because that means that changed something about who I am today or where I would be today. And I'm, yeah. and I'm, and I'm pretty happy with where I'm today. I mean, it hadn't been a joy ride all the way through, but all those bad moments made me who I am today too, you know? And, um, so yeah, I guess I'm pretty content as well. I, I say that all the time that I wouldn't trade any of it for any of it. If, if trading any of it yeah. affects any of it, then let's just keep things the way that they were. Uh, you know, good and bad, and I will, I will carry what I have with me gladly. Yeah, gladly. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, we we grew up. I know uh, we're here in Mississippi, but we grew up in Memphis, and so Memphis has got, you know, some bruises and some scars. You know, and one I think I heard about Memphis is that you know Memphis is a city that's got bruises and scars, but it's not afraid to show them off. You know, or just to tell you about what these bruises and scars came from, right. you know, as a, not say a point of pride, but this is about who we are. And, and I, I thought that was pretty good. And so I've got scars and I've got bruises and that, that just makes me who I, who I am. Well said. Well, I think we've taken up about all the time that I told you we'd take up. How'd we do on air conditioning? We're, we're hanging it's in It's not here. so bad. We're right no. at that point Temperature now where warm. I'm starting to get the beads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Will, man, I, I appreciate you coming out here. I appreciate your friendship. Yeah, thanks a lot, Will. You know, I, yeah. I, I value you as a, as a person, as a friend. I always have. I always looked up to you. You know, your family has all been good to me. Um, we've had a lot of good times, man. For sure. Well, I'm extremely grateful for being here and spending this time and uh, getting the opportunity to chat with you all about this. It's been a great time. And, and likewise, man, you're one of my closest friends, and uh, I care for you a lot, man. Thanks. Uh, hopefully I hit the record button and it will be able to <laughs> put this out for everybody to see. Thanks, Will. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Thank you. LHRL number 58 is in the books.